Hi everyone, it's Karen Tamir here for Live with Prima. I am so happy to be here and I have an exciting project for, for you today. I'm making a three 6x6 six six canvases uh, using the Garden Fable collection. Um, I will say that I have some announcements but I'll leave them till the end and I'm just going to turn my camera upside down and show you what I'm going to be creating today. So bear with me. Hold on. Uh, oops. My phone is here. If anybody needs it, I didn't mean to put it on. As you can see, my beautiful Prima mat. I took off the, since this project is not very messy, I took off the, my craft mat. I don't know. I don't like how this looks. Hold on. I took off my, oh, much better there. You see, I got a good angle. I took off my craft mat and we'll just bring it for a couple of projects. So, so these are my three little ones, the yellow, hello, okay. They look a little bit yellowish. I mean, they do have a lot of yellow and I used three six by six canvases and three little flat four by four, by four canvases, but I'm gonna go through everything and just show you. I did do a little bit of prep because I didn't wanna sit here and show you how I'm painting these so many times. There's three of them to paint. So. I don't know if you can see, I want to show them a little bit closer, I'm going to try. You see that texture over there? So that texture was created with a palette knife and I'm going to show you how I did it only on one of the, on one of the canvases so then we don't have to waste time with everything. One second, okay, let me move this aside now. So, let me just bring the three canvases here. Here are the three canvases, and as you can see, I've already done, prepped this one. And what I did, you can see the texture on it already. Um, I used this chalkboard paint from Prima, and then it's called, it's the sand color, color, and it's 577148. I had to give it about three coats to each of these um, canvases um, just because it's very, it's a little, it's not as opaque as you think it is, even though it's chalkboard paint. So I've done already the three coats on both of these, but I am going to show you what I did on this third one, okay? So I already did two coats on this one, and I'm going to show you how to make the third coat. I am going to bring my mat just, I mean my craft mat just for this. Oops, I think I just moved the camera one second. Sorry. Let me re redo this. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly bring this just to show you how I did it. And I need my palette knife, which I took out especially to do it, and now I don't know what I did with it. I thought I put it on my. Sorry, guys. Okay, one sec. Uh, oh, here it is. Okay, so I use this really dirty palette knife and it doesn't really matter how and I'm going to show you what I did. So, oh, hi, Courtney. I just saw who, who just walked. All right. Let me move this up a bit. Oops. Hold on. So, what I did is I applied I applied the paint with a sponge or with a paintbrush okay and don't give it a thick coat I learned this already by trying it out and you guys are gonna love this it's so much fun and relaxing to do what I'm gonna do next okay so there is the coat and then the problem was with the with the paint is that I could see streaks on it and I didn't like it. So I thought, oh, I wonder what will happen if I'll just start, like you know, kind of uh, moving it with the palette knife to give it more, like to like smooth it out. And as I was smoothing it, I started like kind of pressing on it, and it started giving it. And I want to I want to show you from closer. It's just not okay. There, you see that? It's hard to see from when it's too far away. There's too much light. And if you go in different directions, you can get, you can get this type of effect. So 
let me put a little bit of less light here. I don't know, it's hard to see. I guess you cannot see the textured effect unless I lift it up. So I'm just going to lift it up so you can see it. And the reason why I put a little bit of paint, what happened was that when I put too much paint and I was pressing down, the paint was going back to its original form of smoothness. It wouldn't stay with the texture on it. So I had to I had to remove some of the paint and let it and then do it again over and over. So I learned to just put very little paint. I've done this technique uh, with other things and it also and, and I find that you can do it with more paint, but with the chalkboard paint you need very little paint. Very little paint to do it. As you can see, you see the texture there? That's how I like that's why I thought it was cool. Anyways, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me that thinks it's cool. But then again, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to wipe my palette knife. And this just needs to dry in the meantime. And I'll just let it dry on the side. Um, this is just chalkboard paint. Sorry, I know I see somebody just walked in. Hi, Carrie. Carrie McKenzie. And, um... I just see that some more people walked in and yeah I just used chalkboard paint and I just added texture by splatting it with my spatula. Okay I'm gonna put this aside and I'm going to put this to dry. All right hold on now as you can see on my on these I have this little square here that I used for that I used these little flat canvases they're very cheap to get anywhere and basically Michaels or anywhere you go um, or an art store and they're four by four this is a brand from Canada but unless you're Canadian you don't know it but they're very like easy I mean I could have used like cardboard or something like that but I just don't like it that you can see the cardboard underneath on a canvas and uh, unless you really paint and I didn't have patience for that so I just did it this way and what I did is I covered them with some paint with some with a paper from the paper pad collect from the garden fable collection so here it is this A4 paper pad that I cut and I actually used this green one which is are so pretty as you can see, I was trying to show you. Okay. Now, the thing is that I this I when once I finished this project, I said to my sister, her my sister's niece's my, my niece's room is basically all these colors except for green. And she and as she saw the project, she asked me if I could make the same thing with blue because she has blue in her room and not green. So as I was looking through these papers, I found one that would probably work. So today I'm going to try and do it in blue shaded just so she can have it. Because I was going to give it to her and just tell her, tell her to deal with it and just have it with the green. But you know what? I love my sister. So let me put it with blue. And I thought, oh, let's use this color, which is like a turquoise kind of blue. And I think that's exactly the color that she has in my niece's room. So I'm going to rip one of these and I'm going to use it for my background okay so I'm gonna grab my cutter and I'm going to let me move these in the meantime I'm gonna grab my cutter and I'm going to cut these a four by four more or less as I know the canvases are four by four I don't really need to like measure trace or measure I just cut and I'm gonna cut this four by four, hold on. Which is perfect. So they'll be a little bit different. They'll have these really neat designs in the background. Okay. Oh, sorry, in the paper pad number, I should have said that. Um, the Garden Fable paper pad is 847333. And it's great, it's beautiful. Um, okay, so there is two. Hold on, let me measure this one also to make sure that it's not too long. Yeah, this one is too long. Okay, good. And I want one more. 
I'm missing the chat. What's going on? There's a sale somewhere I see, but I didn't know see where. If you have any questions, feel free to ask Carrie or Delina or anybody who's I think Carrie's moderating tonight, so oh you know what? I wonder how big is this one. Yeah, I like this design over here because it's more it has more blue on it, so let me just Oh no, it's too long enough, so never mind. Okay, so I'll go back to this one. Four, and then I'll measure four in this direction. Okay, there we go. Now I have three of them. Perfect, and I still have some leftover scrap paper. Okay. So the way I, I used is I used... Um, oh, and I should bring my mat again. Hold on, what did I do with it? Hold on, I'm look, getting my mat. Okay. So I just, because I'm using the soft matte gel, I want to make sure that I have this, this gets very sticky on your fingers. Okay, so I'm using Art Basic Soft Matte Gel just to glue these papers, almost like a kind of a decoupage style. All right, so that's, and the other thing, sorry, I forgot to say, I did fussy cut already three bird houses from the from one of the papers from the paper uh, from the Garden Fable collection. It is called. Hold on. It's this paper it has bird houses. It's called Bird House, and it's eight four seven two three four. And I'm going to be gluing them on these squares I'm going to be using the matte gel for it too so this is basically what I'm going to be doing and I'm going to be adding the little house on top how cute is that okay so I need a brush mm -hmm, mm -hmm. talking to myself talking to myself okay so just very good idea to just add glue on the canvas. I love this; these gels, they stick to I love the 3D gel, but this one is just really thin and nice to use. Okay, glue on top, easy so far. Oops, shake the whole table. Sorry, out of focus. Okay. That's so true, I just read some of it. Lisa, I'm excited for you to be a grandma. I mean, I can't wait, not that I can't wait, not that it makes a difference to me, but it's really exciting times. And you, yeah, you will have a lot of photos to scrap, baby photos, which will be fun, fun, fun. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna kind of glue this one in the middle. And once you glue it, you wanna go over it with the gel so the corners don't lift up and um, just seals it all in kind of like decoupage I guess and um, make sure also in these corners that you glue them all because they tend to kind of lift up too that one is okay if it, if it doesn't lift up you're fine so there is one how cute is oh sorry how cute is that so that's one I'll show you what I did with it after here's the second one I want to add. Hi, Miko. Anybody else I missed? I don't know if I missed anybody else. Yay. Okay, so there's a. Here's the second one. Oh, and funny enough, yeah, this blue one in the back has the birdhouses on the other side, so it's the same one from the other side. Okay. Now I'll put this birdhouse on. Okay. Do you guys ever use this soft matte gel? I find that it gets so sticky on my fingers. It feels like it, you have some kind of uh, sticky, like, second skin on your, once it dries, like on my fingers, and it's so hard to get off. Sometimes I sit, I sit there and I like for like 10 minutes in the in the like beside the sink trying to get these off trying to get 
that second skin off me. Okay, sorry, all right. So I seal the second one. Oh wait, no, I'm supposed to check the corners. I'm not, not following my own advice. Okay, and, and the good thing, if you put a thin layer, it dries pretty quickly, which is nice. Where's my third square? Did you guys see my third square? Did I drop it? Huh. I lost a square. What do you know? Okay, so I guess I have to use another one. What happened to my third square? Do you guys see it or is it just me that is blind here? Wow. Okay, maybe it's underneath. Okay, but it's too big. Okay, hold on. Sorry about that. Somehow it disappeared. I'm just cutting this other one quickly. So I have good that I had spares. Okay, so now just do the last one. What did I miss? Oh, something about Carrie. Carrie, what were you saying? I don't know. I missed the whole conversation of something about somebody having a another baby or a girl or something oh, okay now I got I understood your brother got married or something like that. okay better not follow the conversation and follow what I'm doing here otherwise I'm gonna get all lost of what I am doing okay put this one last one. How did I add it? I think I added it on this side. Just to make it different. And I don't like that it's sticking out here. Sorry. Need to restick it. Now, even though I cut this exactly 4x4, four four, somehow these canvases seem smaller than, I mean, smaller than the 4x4. Four I guess they're wrapped around the edges, so I do have some leftover paper over them, but don't worry, I will show you what to do. You see how there's like extra, oops, you see how there's extra paper here? I am going to um, use the Invit Balm's uh, Distress Edger. Anyways, okay, so I have now all three let me put this in my one in my I have all three of them here oops here somehow my camera is off today and let me close this and I'm just gonna let them dry so there's the three oh hi Lorena hi Joanne I just saw you came in <laughs> I'm trying to see while I'm wiping. I'm just wiping my hands and getting that sticky part off for a second. Okay. I'm going to give it this a quick dry just because I want to show you what I did next. I like What I like about this gel is that it dries really quickly, which is really nice. Hi, Tamiko. Did I say hi already? I don't know what Tamiko is Miko. What am I saying? Sorry. I'm like saying it twice. Hi Paula. Wow, Paula's here. And so glad all these European people are staying up so late to see me. I'm very excited. And somebody else is gonna be a grandma. Yay! Did I miss your name? Oh, Liz, Liz, Liz. That's really cool. I just saw your Liz. Wow, so many grandmas. Oh, hi, Laura. Okay, you see how as I'm drying, some of the corners are lifting up, so you do want to...
try to glue them as much as you can. So I'm going to actually cheat a little bit and use some of my fabric tack because I don't have patience to go back with and get my hands all sticky. So I'm gonna just use a little bit of the fabric tack to just glue these corners because they're dry. I don't want to wait so long. Okay. Oh. It's still very sticky. I think I might have to put something heavy on them. I'll put these water bottles on. And I'm going to put this on that one, and then we're good. Okay, so now, while this is drying, I'm going to go back to my other canvases, which I put, oh, here they are. I'm going to show you what else I did. So you see, these are like this, and I am going to use, okay, so for the one with the green, I used the Moss Green Ingvild Balm Chalk Edger. However, because I'm doing a blue color today, I'm gonna to be using the turqu turquoise stone. Well, I'm getting tongue tied. So I'm gonna just basically add a little bit of color to this on the edges. And all I'm doing is, oh, good, look at this, it's broke. Okay, it's okay, I'm gonna use my fingers for it. Don't worry. It's all, you can always use these like this. So I'm gonna use this blue turquoise stone, turquoise, oh, la, la. you see I'm getting tongue tied. Turk oh guess what I found I found the square that I was missing oh well too little too late so I'm gonna use a turquoise stone just to get some extra color just an extra of that blue color onto the edges what I like about it I mean don't worry about the center just because I'm gonna be putting the other canvas it kind of highlights the texture much better as you can see see the texture it gets highlighted a little bit better and it's just very faint color nothing too extreme because you don't want it to be the center of attention you want it just to kind of fade into the background and I'm gonna do the other one too there's still one that is drying but I just want to do it yeah these edges are the best really love Yeah, we've missed you, Laura. It's so nice that you came today. I'm glad when people have the time to just come and watch the shows. It's so nice. Yeah, I'm going to have some quite dirty fingers. You're right. Okay, so basically nothing fancy. I'm also excited. I'm doing a little bit of the, actually, the edges too. Just because, um, okay. All right. And the good thing about these is that you can heat set them and then they stay the way they are. I'm just going to heat set this one a little bit. Oh, for the texture, Lorena, I used... Um, the sand color of the chalkboard paint but I use a spatula and basically just spattered on the spatula like this on it and it let me uh, create texture okay so that's done I will do the third one after when it dries I'm just gonna close this for in the meantime we just can work on a couple of them in the meantime so I really like it. This is one. Is, this is my favorite one. I think. I think this is my favorite. So I'm going to show you what I did. I grabbed this tool, which is very handy, handy dandy, and I basically just scrape the edges. And I'm trying to show you. you. See how it becomes? They become white. I use the. Actually, you can use this. It's easier. I use the back. This part. I use this part of it. And I scraped the edges, and they became, and I they kind of took off the extra excess, the excess part of the, of the paper that I had left over. And you can go in all directions, any way you like it. The more you press, the, the more distressed it will be. So that's how I got the edges done. Oops, I'm getting stuck. Okay, well, 
I do this, I can watch the chat a little bit. So it does make a big of a mess, but it's really fun. And it, it gives you a really good effect, especially if you like this dressing. So, I'll show you how it looks in a second. So as you can see, you see that like the edges are very distressed, which is really nice. And you could even go after with a turquoise stone and edge them around, but I think I'm gonna leave them like this because I did match it with the other medium that I used, the snow effects that I used later on. I'm just gonna do this one too. I hope I wasn't ambitious today and, and I hope I'll finish on time. <laughs> I should. I thought I was doing well. And this one. Wow, it looks coming really cool. It looks really, really cool. Look at all the fluff that I'm getting all the paper that I'm getting rid of. Okay, good. Oh, it's getting really sticky. Oops, something fell. And then, last one, and then I'll move everything. School foot scrapper, what is that? Is that what it's called? Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Yeah, it does look like one of those foot ones, but you guess you could probably use it if it was really distressed. You could use anything to do this. You could use it in scissors, like the edge of your scissors. Um, well, this one is really good. Okay, one last edge and then I'm done. All right. I think uh, some of the canvas was coming off it. I wasn't sure. All right, let me just wipe this because it's gross. I'm making a mess on my nice mat that I, I changed the size of my mat. Delina, are you happy about how neat my, my mat is and how clean? I was trying to to impress Delina today. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, just cleaning up. All right. So I can put this away and I can bring back my hand. So the, um, so the first thing I'm going to do now, okay, now I can get rid of this thing. I'm not going to be using this anymore because I like the mat. Just to, so you can see that I'm actually using the mat and it's not just sitting underneath. So I think this one is going to go on this side just because it's just, then I can put all the flower arrangement here and look how pretty it looks. Wow, I like it. Okay, I'm, I used basically Fabri-Tac because it's my go-to glue now all the time. And you really want to add a lot of glue, make sure that it sticks on. You don't want it to be falling off if you're giving it as a present. Oops, there's an extra piece here. Okay, so there is that. Oh, maybe I should put it a little bit higher just so I can put some, if I put it a little bit higher, I can put some other embellishments at the bottom here. Yeah, and there's my second one. And I think I will glue this one on it. Can you guys see? Yeah. Just gluing the other one to this side of the page. Excellent. Now, let's see if my other, just want to see if my other canvas dried up already. And yeah, look at that. You see, that's the one where I just did. And the texture, there it is. Perfect. So I just have to do the turquoise stone first on it. Better not dirty my mat. This is this turquoise stone I think is going in the garbage after this. It's like on its last leg. I have I think I have some more anyways. 
it's really giving the texture, like it's highlighting the texture, which is nice. Somebody message me? No. Okay. I heard my phone ding. Okay. Perfect. I think I added a lot of blue on this one, so it's nice. Almost want to add more on this at the edges. I'm sorry, I'm going back and I'm just adding a little bit more at the edges here. I just think it looks nicer when it's a little bit more highlighted. Just at the edges, kind of giving it a, a, a border. I'm going to do this last one too. I think I did this with the other one too. I just like it when there's a border around it. It kind of looks really neat. Okay, good. So I'm just going to glue the last one. I think I'm going to center that one. How did I do it here? No, I did it a little bit to the side. Okay. The last canvas. So I really like playing with canvases, mini canvases. I go, I'm constantly at the art store buying canvases so I can play around with them. Just this week I went to get in one because I have um, another show on a, on a new artist channel that I started called Artist Lives. A few of you have already been there. And I'm doing a show on Monday and I ran out of one of the size canvases that I did, which is a six by 12. So I had to run and get one yesterday. And of course I picked up a million of other canvases that I saw. All right, so here we have the three of them side by side. Now the fun part begins and that is to embellish and you can embellish without Prima flowers. So I'm going to take them out and I'm going to tell you what I use. First I used, oh, you know what? They don't look like the same height. Hold on. Okay. I use this old vine, one of my favorites, really beautiful. It's called Millicent Meadowlark and it's 556174 and that one is for this one. So each one has its own vine. I use this one, which is, has a yellow tinge and it's Button Vine Nature Garden. It's for the Nature Garden collection and it's 555948. Unfortunately, I did not get any um, any embellish, any flowers for the Garden Fable collection. So that's why you don't see any of those today. And I also used another vine, hold on, okay which is this one for this last one here. And this one is the, from the Divine Collection, 565299. So these are the three vines and I'm going to show you what I did. I have to work with one at a time though. Haha, <laughs> you guys are funny. I think it would hurt if you used it on your feet. Okay. So let me just compare a little bit to the other one that I did here. I have it here. So um, I kind of cut, I love, one of the things I like about these vines is that you can cut them and you can use them any way you want. So you can use them here and then use the other piece up here and it kind of frames the picture. So which is, looks really good. Then. Um, for this particular one, I used, oh, these are my favorite called from this last, uh, CHA. It's, uh, they're called, uh, Isabella flowers. This one is the Danny, Danny one. It's, um, 581701 and they're pink in color and they're just gorgeous. I really, really love them. However, I think, I see how I did all of them pink here. I used all pink ones. I think I'm going to add some of blue just because I know my sister really wanted it to have a little bit of blue in it. So, um, so, so basically with the flowers, you can just play around. I'm going to use, let me see which one looks better. So I pulled two blue flowers out. One is the, oops. One is the Isabella ones too, but it's this one is called Nicia. I think I'm pronouncing it right, and it's 581688. What do you guys think? I think it's two, it doesn't really match. I think this one matches better, the Valentinas. So I think I'm gonna put these aside. And these are the 
I think they're called Valentinas, but I'm not sure because they don't have a name here. 581978. They're not on the, the original list, so I'm sorry about that, but I just want to see how they look with the blue. And I'm just going to grab one blue flower. I think it will really look nice. Yes. Oh, wow. It looks so pretty like this. Okay. And maybe even one more. Maybe this one. How cute is that? So I'm really... going for this blue theme that I like that she asked me for and it's turning out really cute look how cute is that I also used this the garden fable uh, chipboard and uh, it is number five seven nine five six two and this one has what did this one have this one have the natural beauty sign so that's for that and there's so many things yes I live in yes I live in on Vaughan on, yeah, in Canada basically near in the suburbs of Toronto but I all right and okay so one of the things I wanted to do because of I love bird houses and birds I'm really into them I really wanted to add a different bird from each type of collection that have been over the years. I mean, I couldn't add every single bird that we've ever had, but I tried to pick different ones. So for this one, I used, uh, this is a very old one, but it's a nice one. And it's um, 555221. It comes like this. It comes with the metal piece and the resin piece. And it, like, it's like a bird sitting on a, on a, on a, on a log. And I thought it was really cute and it would fit perfectly with the theme. Hold on, I have to get it out. Oh, so that's where Syracuse, isn't that where, uh, isn't that where Carrie lives? Or do you live some, I don't know. I'm thinking of Jennifer, I don't know, I get everybody confused. Oh, thanks Courtney. <laughs> okay. All right, so now I'm, I have this out. There it is. How cute and the bird is kind of sitting staring at the house so that is one of them and I'm gonna glue it before everything moves so I always like setting everything up and then gluing it just to know to see if I really like the way it looks and I do just want to move this a little bit and kind of manipulate the leaves and the oops the leaves and all the flowers to to make them fit how you like it okay good and this bird I love this bird it's so cute hold on and if you can't remember um, if you can't remember uh, where you place things always take a picture of them I'm kind of going to wing it and hopefully it will remember where everything was. But if you can't, you can always do that. Oh, that's funny, Courtney. I thought you were saying it as a joke. That's so funny. I don't know where everybody's from. I think you've told me where you're from, Courtney. I just don't remember. Have you said? Oh, I, Lorraine, I know you're from, I know you're from, from uh, near Ottawa. So yes. So I do know that. I did know Lorraine was from around here. Not around here. It's not around here. It's four hours away, but around here. Um, you know and I did I thought I'd remember how this looked and I didn't so I have to kind of play around with it again that's okay and I got some glue on me all right Ugh, hold on it's so sticky now why did the line I say that it's funny oh <laughs> 
I know I do have an accent. The reason why I have an accent is because I'm not originally from Canada, as you might know. Um, I grew up, I grew up in Venezuela, so I speak Spanish, but I also was born in Israel, so I also speak Hebrew. So I think I kind of have a mixed accent and um, nobody really knows, like, every time, every time I speak in Spanish, people tell me I have an accent. I speak in Hebrew, people say I have an accent and in English too. Anyway, so there is one, how pretty, oh, oops, this one I didn't glue. Okay, sorry. There is the first one. Well, I got to hurry up and how pretty is that mm -hmm. good and I don't like this sticking out so I'm going to kind of cut it and re-glue it over here oops this doesn't have enough glue let's put more glue on it okay I just looked at the time so I need to hurry up a little bit okay so there's one Second one is this vine. That's right, you're right, Lorena. <laughs> I do. That's why I was telling uh, Vivian that I could translate. Everybody has an accent on Live with Prima, almost, <laughs> except for maybe Carrie and Adrian. Okay, this is the yellow one. I'm gonna cut it again. Oops. similar design because this vine is very similar to that oh what happened where did the other flower go no I don't like this I want this one here so I want to cut it off so you can play around with these and it's so fun because you can really get the look that you like and I'm going to see yeah I think I did this the other way around you see I did the bigger one here and the smaller one up here Okay, good. And for this one, I use the, also the Isabella flowers, but I use the yellow ones, which are called, hold on, let me remember, Gemma, Gemma with a J. And um, is the number, sorry, is 581718. And I use a bunch of yellow ones here. Again, I'm gonna combine them with the blue. I'm gonna use this large one over here. I mean, no two projects that are alike, are alike, and I don't want to lose this leaf, so I'm going to cut it off. Um, I'm going to use more of these blue flowers. Because I think it looks so pretty with the blue. Oh, why didn't I think of this before? And what else did I use on this one? Okay, so for this one, I really like what I use. First of all, I use another chipboard from here. This one is called This Is Love. And how cute is that? Okay. And I also used, I think, I think I'm gonna add it here. I also use some of these, oh, I just realized. I also use some of these roses that come in the chipboard. They're really cute. Oh, hi Donna okay and I'm also gonna add them underneath here I should glue some of these things already okay and for this one the birds that I chose to use are one of my favorite all-time Prima uh, called, um, products by Ingvild and these are called fly away 891480 I think I've bought these so many times and I can never get enough of them and I'm gonna use two of these birds. One is kind of like flying away over here, or flying up, and the other one will be kind of perched right here on this birdhouse. There. Now I'm gonna glue, quick, quick, quick. Let's try to do it a different way. And just kind of glue it on the spot so I don't lose where things are. Oh, and then it fell anyway. Okay. 
Okay. This one is oh this one is not glued on, so some of the leaves I had to take apart, right? So I have to separately glue them. Because you glue as you glue things and they are kind of attached to each other. So you don't have to worry. I just want to make sure that you put some on everything and then you're fine. Oh, I got some glue on my mat. Hold on, hold on. I have to clean my mat. One second. Everybody stop. I have to clean my mat before it gets all sticky. Oh, no, no, no. They're lying. I help. Okay. Just joking. Okay. Let me put some glue. Oh, I put already glue here. Now I'm going to put some glue here. Don't let it get on my mat. So sticky. This glue is so sticky. Oh, sorry. I'm, am I getting out of focus there? I just realized that. I'm not looking. When I don't look at my... which goes kind of underneath these. So it's not exactly how the other one turned out, but it's pretty similar. Still really pretty. And I think I'm going to glue this here. I think it's, you know what, I'm looking at it and it's missing, oh, stuck to my fingers. It's missing a flower. The tragedy. Okay, I think yes, it's missing a flower right here. I felt it felt too empty right here at the bottom. Did you guys feel that too? Huh? Huh? Or no? Not really. Probably everybody thinks I'm crazy, but you can't have a missing flower. I even think I need a little another little blue one. Oh. I think I'm going to use this blue one underneath here. Let me move things around. It looks too messy. I hate when my table looks messy. I hate looking at something that looks very messy. There we go. Okay. And I think I'm going to use this blue one over here to kind of tuck it in. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. There's the second one. How cool. And then you're going to see how I tie it all up together. To tie it all together. I meant to say. Not tie it all up. I'm not tying a shoe or anything. Here is my third one, and this one I kind of did a little bit of a different shape finally. And um, where's the third one here? Okay. So I'm kind of gonna want to look at it, just because it not in focus. What's going on? Can you guys see it? Okay. I feel like it's not in focus. I'm gonna move it in a little bit. Okay. So uh, this one actually just glued the way it is. Uh, you can manipulate these vans, uh, these vines, any way you like. So I manipulated it going out, and then I used some more of the the yellow flowers. I think again I'm going to add some blue onto them too. And this one I have two blue flowers left. So they're going to have to be used like this. Oh, and you know what sometimes you can do, which is really nice with the Prima flowers? I sometimes take them apart and you can use them in two separate places. I find it, look, I have two flowers. And this one you can kind of tuck in so nobody will know that you use the same flower twice. And the other one, you can kind of put here, and it doesn't. And you can tell that it was one flower, which is really nice. And 
Oh, wait, I have some more yellow ones here, the, the, the darker color one. I'm just combining all the yellow ones together. I had two packages, so... Okay, I can't follow. I cannot follow the chat. I don't know what's going on. Okay, and I used... Oh, what did I do? Hold on. I thought I had this here. So for this third one, I just realized that I don't have the chipboard, uh, not the chipboard, the, the wood icon that I used for it. So just one second, I'm going to go get it. Okay, I'm back for the third canvas. I used a wood icon from the Cigar Box Cigar Box Secrets Collection, and it's um, it says lovely, and it's really cute too. So let me start gluing this because otherwise I'm gonna lose track of what I'm doing. Okay, I'm just gluing this. And you can move the leaves around, so if you want to tuck some other things in, so for example, I want to tuck in my title inside. Over here, where it says lovely. And if you don't, if it doesn't stay the way you like it, just use some glue. Kind of, I think I was using the word manipulate the other day. I was using, I think it was the liner. She can manipulate, she was manipulating something else. I don't remember what it was, it wasn't the vines, but I'm manipulating the vines today. yellow one should go here. Oh, I almost put it in the front of the... Okay, hold on. This other yellow one should go here. Hmm, let's see. Not sure if I... Let's see. Okay. Yeah, I think this is it. I mean, this is the other one I made. Well, not full. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Don't forget my little bird that is supposed to go on this one. And for this one, I use in one of the newest ones, which is the owls. And how cute is this? Love this owl. Okay. Now, this is this is it for now. Hold on. Don't get me wrong. I um, still have a few more steps to go. Let me just glue the owl. And I'll show you what the next steps are. One of the things I love using, and just to make it things very, they make it very um, shabby chic looking, is using cheesecloth. And I'm going to use some cheesecloth to create some wisps around, um, around the flowers. Let me move the old ones now around. Okay, here are the three canvases. Okay, you can see them. And um, I'm going to use some cheesecloth. I don't know, you can, I buy it at Walmart and it just comes like a big fluffy stuff. And I cut it, whisk it in. The reason why I'm doing it now is because my glue is kind of still wet underneath the flowers. So I can kind of tuck it all in and it will just stay there because there's glue. And if there isn't enough glue, just add some more. Hold on. And look how cool it looks. Oh, wait, let me show you from close up, from a close up. Look, it adds like extra texture to the background, which I really, really love. 
I mean, many people use this. It's not something innovative, new, but I just love using it. I used to use it in all my layouts, and then I stopped. And now, some in some of these things, the, the non-mixed media ones, I like to use them a lot. So there we go. A little bit more shabby. Yeah, dollar store also. I don't know. I've, I've searched my dollar store. I don't. I don't see it in the Dollarama at my. Have you seen it, Carrie, in the Dollarama around here? Or Lorena? Okay, I love the wisps. They're so nice. I just have one last step at the end of it all. Oh, I wish I would have turned on my fan. I am so hot in the room. Whew. Just adding some glue so I can have, so I can kind of stick it in. Oh, okay. Thanks, Lorena. So I'm just cutting some more, and I want to add it kind of underneath here. I should really look probably in the in the kitchen section I just don't ever know I always bought it at Walmart but I bet you is it it's probably not a dollar at the Dollarama we have a dollar store that is not really everything is not really a dollar some things are two dollars three dollars a dollar twenty five up to three dollars so it's not really I mean things are still cheap but it's not really a dollar store like because everything is a dollar doesn't even make sense to me sometimes okay I'm gonna show you guys a close-up of it soon Oops, don't want to cover the lovely. Okay, so let me just show you how it looks. So you see all the wisps? Hold on. I just think it looks really cute. Um, all right. So one last step. So bear in mind, we're just gonna, only going to be a few minutes late. Not super late. All right. I really wanted to like tie it all in together and I usually use gesso for this step and I take a, a paintbrush and I go over all the flowers with gesso with white gesso however I did not want to do that this time because I really wanted something that will stick out that will be very texturized so I took my snow effect snow accents and you know what I really like the how it turned out so I guess I grabbed the right thing um, and what I did is, I have to dig inside for it. I went over and created texture around the petals on top. And what this does, it kind of ties in all the, all the whites that are on the page or on the, you can use this on a page, on the canvas. It ties it all up with all the whites on the, on the project. It really gives it an amazing like effect. And on the leaves, try not to cover them too much unless you go make a mistake. And I added even a little bit of texture on the birds. And if it goes on the cheesecloth, who cares? On these leaves, it just looks really cool. It look they look distressed. Distressed, yeah. I usually do this, as I said, with um, with the gesso, but gesso would have not given this effect, this cool effect. I'm doing it on the title. Oops, got it on a little bit. And I'm also doing it in the, uh, what I did is in the edges of the actual canvas, which, oh no, I made my mess again of my, of my thing. I'll show you how. I went around pretty thickly and created this border around it and it makes it look really neat and again don't go and do all around the border like you see how I'm leaving spaces I'm doing that on purpose it just looks more distressed it looks like you actually grab that that um, distress tool and create it created it around and see you see how it looks and it will dry like that which is really neat I'm trying to show it to you I know I know the line I have to clean it I know but I'm just like 
trying to, I want to finish on time. It's already 10.30. Hold on. I just want to. Okay. Two more minutes. I want to finish this one too. I can't like not finish a project. Sorry. <laughs> um, it'll be two seconds. Oh, my. Can I sing? I mean, I might not add everywhere and then I'll go back after and add some more. But I just want to show you guys the effect. And then I have some announcements to stay along. Hold on. And if you didn't distress enough around with the tool, you can always use this. Hold on. Now I'm going fast. This is a really fun. Oh, what is this string? Look at this. This is a fun texture to add. And the last one and I'm done. Yay. My sister will be happy that I used the blue. <laughs> I'll show you both of them in a second. Oh yeah. Robbie, do you hum and sing? I don't remember that. Did you do that yesterday? Oh no, two days ago. Robbie was on two days ago on, on Flying Unicorn. It's when I have nothing to say, so I'm just humming instead. Is that funny or what? The worst is when I'm talking to myself and my son starts asking me why am I talking to myself. I'll be scrapbooking and then he comes into the room and says, are you talking to yourself? I said, uh, I'm just thinking out loud. That's what it is, it's thinking out loud. Okay, well, I'm obviously not that I'm going to let this dry, but I'm just going to show you. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to show you now both canvases, I mean both sets. Hold on. And then I'm going to make announcements. Wait, clean my mat, clean my mat, clean my mat. So the liner doesn't say anything else. All right. Okay, so here is the blue one. And here is, let me match them up exactly. This is the green one. So I'm not sure now I like them both. Hold on. Wait, let me put this a bit further back. So, I, oh, good, better. So you can see, I mean, as you can see, they have more light right here. So that's, so that's what you're seeing. Yes. Here we go. So, oh, no, it's not even set. Okay, there you go, more or less. Okay, so these are the two that I made. This is the green one and this is the blue one. So it's really cute. So you have two of them. Um, let me just turn the everything around. Okay, I'll turn them around and I just will let you, I'll show you. Oh, wait, I have an announcement, so don't go anywhere. Let me just get them. Um, oh, next Tuesday. Yeah, that's what it is. Next Tuesday, it's, um, oops. Next Tuesday is, uh, Frank is going to be on, on Tuesday, June 16th. Oh, hold on. I forgot to turn myself around. Sorry. Hello. There I am. Okay. Um, so next Tuesday, June 16th, Frank is going to be on at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is uh, 11 o'clock Pacific Time. And he's gonna be creating a really gorgeous layout um, that he's had, like I think that you saw, you might've seen it on the blog today. And also another thing, a really exciting announcement is that special delivery is not being revealed next week like you guys thought, but it's being revealed on Facebook, Facebook tomorrow. So stay tuned and come to visit us, uh, come visit Live with Prima uh, dot com to see and oh yeah it's on Facebook and live with prima.com so come to either one of those sites so you can see uh, the new um, 
the new special delivery kit and if you purchase the kit there is a very nice surprise that you can grab for those who purchase it so stay tuned and watch okay thank you so much for everyone coming it was a, just a really good turnout i was really excited for you all to be here with me and see how i create thank you so much and see you soon bye